All right, YouTube, so a wow fly. I'm out of the woods, the local woods. There's a bag for today. Uh, NC Star Tactical Medic bag. Single shoulder strap covered in molly. Anyway, we just got here. Well, I normally do my stealth camping, wild camping. But uh, we're going to do the usual quick walk round to make sure no one else is here. I came in the top entrance today because I haven't got the Bergen or trailer. That made a change. And I can afford to have a quick peek down the bottom because it's so open. I've got good visibility. Got all these marks here from deer, I think, scuffing their hoofs up. Uh, actually, no. Might be something smaller. There's one over here. Uh, rabbit or badger, probably badger looking for worms. We get more hares up here than uh, rabbits. That looks a bit big for a rabbit. Could be though, can't see no claw marks. But some of the indents look hoof size. Absolutely everywhere. Anyway, let's get on. We're not here for the wildlife today. Right, <coughs> bottom of the wood. It's uh, really exposed this time of year, so I can see anything approaching. Uh, there's a side entrance. I'm normally come in with a bike and trailer. Obviously, it's a bit more open to uh, navigate through here with a trailer than that tiny little I don't know, duck down and breathe in passage about the top. Uh, but yeah, you figured by the title, I came out today, been wanting to do this for about two years, uh, just to do some uh, basher stroke tarp configurations. Uh, if you that follow me, I normally have a lean-to with a porch, as I call it, a little fly wedge for the rain to drop off instead of back in. And uh, before I started hammocking, I used to use a diamond configuration with the folded in rear corners and the pulled open fronts. Um, so we're going to go through a few today. Um, it took me what was it, 12 minutes to get here. I think two of those minutes we're getting in for the field. It's normally a 10 minute cycle. I think it's 13 minutes with the trailer. The longest it's ever took me to get here is 15 minutes. And that's with the trailer totally wedged up. Like literally with everything in the trailer and the Bergen and extra stuff on top of the trailer. You know, on a hot baking summer day. So obviously 15 minutes is the longest. I think it was 11 minutes today. Um, which was quite good. So we'll just do a little walk around, see how exposed it is. We're on a bit of a hill, a bit of a mound. Double check I wasn't followed in. No sign of life. I can see it, but we'll show you. There's the bike, caked in mud, and a boggy field. So as I say before, uh, this island of trees, very small woodland, woodland is surrounded by private land uh, with no public access. Uh, we're on quite a bit of a mound, this is the highest point here, so we're not really going to flood. Um, and of course I can see across the fields left, right and behind me through that gap when I camp at the top. And this time of year I can see straight down. Um, so anyone passing is not going to see me until they're right on top of me. It's only happened once or twice. I think once when I was over there at the radios one day, some woman came right up here and didn't see me until I deliberately made a sound to give away my position. So, I'm going to hang my coat up somewhere because it's a bit warm. Uh, I'm exposed today, got no special clothing on today. Just got a Stars t shirt, a Chavy hoodie, and a, and a black jacket. It's not even waterproof. Has a hood though, but it's crap. Northern Ireland gloves, boots obviously because I need them, um, and a bottle of water. No tea or coffee or anything. I was going to bring my little flask, but I decided to break. So the lid just fell apart, and half of it's in the bottle, and I can't get it out. And the big flask is just too big for that bag. So uh, yeah, going to get myself a little little uh, flask now to replace the uh, the broken one.
Right, I'll get my coat off and then we'll dig out what's in the bag. Got, there's a few bits of cordage, a couple of cheap uh, carabiners. I think one's broken because even broken under tension they're still good to use. Um, so yeah, making good of something that doesn't actually work for what it's originally designed for. And one DPM British Army basher. Um, and obviously work gloves. Didn't bring the massive tarp or tarps. Um, and these configurations will work on any size tarp or basher. Uh, it would, just the size will vary. Um, as I said before, the massive like 10 by 12 or 10 by 14 tarps I used before were huge, great for sleeping on the floor in front of a fire in the winter. Um, but the basher with a hammock works better. I don't know. Right, let's just get on and get the first one up. Right, and there's the first one. Break. Standard basic lean to. Uh, all that's needed for that is two pegs and two bungees. You can use four pegs, but the minimum is two. One in each corner. Obviously that gives you enough room to sit, lie down, do whatever you want. You can peg out four at the back to pull it a bit more taut. Demonstration purposes, is this will keep the rain off you. Right, excuse the creases, I'm in a bit of a rush. Uh, simple modification. The first one is power cord from the centre loop, go all the way up high to that tree. Or you can use a stick, um, trek pole, basher pole, whatever you want. That just gives you a little bit more clearance inside. Uh, the basher itself does the same job. All you've done there is gave yourself a bit more space inside. Pause the, obviously pause the back of the basher off away from your uh, sleep area or work area, giving you a bit more room. As I say, you don't need a ridge line. You can use a ridge line, one bit of paracord, or two bits of uh, bungee. I've got a ridge line up at the moment, just for the next stage. Um, that's the basher as a lean-to, and then with the back pulled out, you can see they're quite effective. A little bit more headroom than there was a second ago. And here we have uh, the basher with the fly, the wedge. Um, this helps rainwater to disperse off the basher, where it runs freely. Sort of, there's the ridge line. Rainwater will come down and fall off. Where before, with the basher coming up, if this bit wasn't here, heavy rain would hit the rim and then it would run inwards into the basher. If you follow, a bit hard to explain. Do this side. Say this is the top of the uh, tarp before, rainwater would hit that and then seep inwards if it's on sort of an angle. So this allows the water to run off and not inwards. Um, two guys coming off, one going off to a bush, and this one's just going off to a makeshift tripod of logs, which I left last time to dry out. Um, you can put a set of piece in, a pole, a bit of cordage. I normally use a twig, put a twig from the ridge line to there. And it just keeps the front up. Plenty of room in there. Uh, you'll recognise it if you follow me on YouTube. That's my normal configuration for um, hammocking. I've got a DD Scout, so it's not overly big. You lose a little bit of room, so instead of the bottom of it being here, it is more upright, so you do get less floor space. But again, I've pulled the, uh, the centre loop out slightly, um, only because I haven't permanently tied it off that end. So I haven't pulled it out as far as I could do. Um, in this configuration, because of the angle of the back, um, it allows you to tie it off lower down the tree instead of higher up the tree. Again, this is just two pegs. I'll tell a lie, this isn't my normal configuration. We'll go into that one in just a second. So there's the rear. Rainwater still comes down. It's still protected from the wind uh, and the rain obviously coming down. And uh, right now, quickly, we'll just do uh, the final modification for this setup, uh, which will be my personal favourite. Right. Okay, so you can see the front hasn't changed, uh, just the rear. It's a bit saggy because ideally I need three cords, but for this, I'm just using two. But as you can see, it's opened it up from about there, from about there, quite a bit. It's gave me another two foot of space, which is vital room. I can now use half of it my hammock and then the other half for kit um, and all I've done is added cord to the rear corners and pegged them out about 
three and a half foot. Um, both sides. I do, you do need a third bit to pull out the middle uh, in high winds, you know, bad weather. But a day like this, it's not flapping, it's not moving, there's no rain. Um, rain water will pretty much hit that. Unless you get rain coming in on a 90 degree angle, totally horizontal. You don't need to worry about water getting in there. And because it's so low down, you know, you're not going to get wind coming under only severe conditions. So that's the final modification I've got. Um, again, I can pull that middle bit out a bit more, um, which gives you room to sort of spin around in the hammock, attend to your kit, or if you haven't got the hammock, you're sitting there, you've still got room to sit up. So I can pull that middle bit out a bit further. Um, but that's uh, all the modifications that I know off that you can do to a lean to. Um, there are a few more. Um, you can peg off the two in the middle and bring the corners in. Uh, it's untold, but these are the ones that I use. And this is my main one that I use when I'm hammocking. Um, very simple, what you got can be done with two pegs and two bits of cordage. Both my bashers have got adjustable cordage on them, so I ripped off an old tent. So it's quick and easy, I can just always set them up with cordage. Like today, I've just pegged that into the ground. I haven't had to tie anything on there and adjust it. They're always adjusted to my needs. Uh, that's all four corners like that. And all my power cord, um, that one and that one, that's looped around itself then tied off of that tree, the same knot as this. Uh, you can put a twig in here to stop it from coming through, but again only in bad weather and I'll just pull them out. I'm not doing videos today on knots, but I'm just saying for quickness and easiness, because that's what it's all about, you know, I'll be set, spending four hours setting up a basher. Every bit of cordage I've got, every bit of power cord also has a loop. Again, quick and easy, I can put a peg for it, I can thread it for itself, I can loop it over a branch. And uh, when you're tying it off to eyelids and stuff, you just put the loop through and then feed the cordage through the loop. And then to get it off, you just pull it out. Very quick, simple, unless you're like me, using a 200 foot bit of cordage. But again, no knots. You don't want to be getting knots out of cold power cord or wet fingers, or wet power cord or cold fingers. Yeah, it just slides out, no effort. So yeah, tip from me, you don't have to do it. A lot of people don't do it. A lot of people hate this technique. But I've got every bit of cordage I've got. It's all got loops in it. Everything from my little strands, my offcuts, everything's got loops in it. I just personally find it easier for that. So, right, we're going to knock this down now and move on to some uh, ground sleeping uh, configurations. There's my ridge line. Loop round the tree. Fit it through itself. All the way up. Go around the tree. Wrapped it around the other way just to put it tight. We'll lose this first. Because this is what was holding the basher taut. And like I said on this one, I've got a tweak just to stop it from coming loose, so you don't have to tie off a ridiculously tight knot and then have to untie a ridiculously tight knot. Although there are a number of knots you can use that aren't tight to undo, I just prefer nice and easy, effortless slip knots. Again, as you can see, I went around the tree two or three times just to give it a bit more stability. And that's it, my ridge line is down. No messing about, No, uh, that's all one-handed too. Most things should be done one-handed. I think most, some things you do need two hands, but if you can do one hand, use one hand, because you never know when you're gonna have one hand. Right, for the next lot of setups, not everyone's perfect, everyone makes mistakes. I meant to bring a uh, trek pole, walking stick, four foot walking stick. You can use basher poles for this, or stick or tree, because I forgot my, um, my pole. <laughs> um, I was gonna tell people and show people you can use a tree, you don't need a pole. Um, but for this video, I'm going to have to, um, basically, because, you know, we're human. We forget things. So, we're going to go straight on to, um, yeah, we'll do the tarp tent first, and we'll leave the most fiddly one for last. We'll do the tarp tent next. This is going to be tiny. I haven't done this for a couple of years since I had a massive, massive, massive basher, and I could have slept like four people in it. Um... This is going to be tiny, but great for you know an afternoon out, getting caught in the rain, or just a quick picnic with the kids. Um, 
but this is going to be small. All right. Behold the simple A-frame. Does exactly as it says in the tin. Got a helicopter flying over, so I'm not sure if you're going to pick that up in the microphone. Uh, two bungees or one ridge line. Four pegs. Very simple. We've been doing this as man since time began, or women, since we were tiny in dining rooms with bed sheets to grown men pretending to be soldiers in the garden. As you can see, basher goes long ways or short ways, whichever way you want it. Um, peg off the corners, slow profile, does a job. Put four pegs down each side. I've got two on each side in the corners just to, uh, for display. Again, plenty of room in there to sleep, plenty of room in there to have a bite to eat. Get to you out the wind and rain can be put up very, very quickly. Just a simple A-frame, which I've messed up the other side because of a little sapling. I haven't been able to peg out that corner. It's just there, <laughs> not pegged in. But yeah, plenty of room in there. You can even have a fire at the end uh, if it's tied off to a tree further away, obviously. Have a fire in there, keep yourself warm. Got good ventilation, the heat will just be passed through and keep you warm all night. Or you can modify it. Right, same sort of thing, A-frame, but raised, raised A-frame. Call this the luxury one of what I've just done. Where you can fit two people comfortable. Instead of pegging it to the ground, I extended the guidelines, pegged them in about three or four foot away. Um, raising it off the ground by about a foot which opens the basher up about a foot and a half either side. So as you can see, that's nearly twice as wide. You'll we'll get two people in there, or one person, is built on the side, and the dog. Uh, very effective for, uh, again, low profile, and 360 degree views. If you are on the lookout or a scout, surveillance of some sort, uh, you can lay in there, and you can see out when you're laying down all the way around. Obviously, because there's a gap at the bottom. Right. Or, if you want something a bit more personal, you can modify it. Oh yeah, this is four pegs and the same ridge line. Uh, I.e. no ridge line, two bungees, but you can use a ridge line instead of two bungees. Um, and yeah, four pegs on the corner. Again, you can use basher poles to raise these, lower one for, to protect, protect yourself from the wind. Uh, raise one corner, raise two corners, raise all four corners. Um, or we'll do uh, the closed end A-frame, which is my personal favourite, but not on a basher this size, something big, something twice the size, or four times the size. And uh, yeah, the closed end A-frame is a fantastic tent. There we go, closed end A-frame instead of the open end A-frame. Um, my personal favourite for all conditions. Uh, there's room in there to sit and do what I want to do for the day. But I don't think there's enough room in there to sleep. We'll measure it. It's one, two, three, four, yeah, nearly five foot long from there to there where the doors pin at the bottom. So it's not ideal to sleep in for some of my height. But again, if you add a basher twice the size or a tarp twice the size of this standard basher, you'd, uh, you'd have quite a good um, sleeping area but generally if you lay out your tarp or your basher rectangularly like longest way this way when you sit it up and you have to sleep you have to sleep that way because it opens up the floor you see that wide across the floor in on this one doesn't go with the length of the basher or tarp the floor in actually goes the opposite way and all we've done on this one is kept the ridge line the same tied off in the middle and instead of tying pegging off the corners we've got the next one in the next loop in or next eye pegged it in same from the other side the next one in pegged it in peg off your two three or four center ones depending on how many you've got on both sides and then you've got your corners your triangle bits will be left so instead of coming straight down here and in take that corner inwards on both sides peg them in together and you get that awesome shape um, Again, if you've got a big enough tarp, you can climb in and out of there. You can put a carabiner on the hooks that are left, the eyelids, to close it off. No rain's going to get in there. Very, very little wind. Again, if you make a good job of sealing this up, a little carabiner on there. Um, or, again, if it's bigger, 
you can pretty much climb in there. It will stretch open for you to climb in and out. Uh, don't recommend that on poles. It can be done if you tie it off well. Uh, but I recommend that for a massive tarp, 10 by 14, 10 by 12, 12 by 14, or even bigger. Uh, if you've got a really huge tarp, I think I could have slept in there. Two people could sleep in there, and there's room at both sides for bags, or bags at one end, a little stove at the other end. So two people can lay in there that way. Um, brilliantly, on my early, early, early videos, I've done that once. But I don't like it because I can't see out of it. But I'm such a big fan of that. Closed end A-frame. Haven't done it for a while. Um, it's a fantastic configuration. Um, but, again, you need a massive tarp. And I can't see anything. I don't come while camping to uh, close myself in a tent. Or I'd bring the tent. Um, again, four pegs. Five, six pegs. Obviously, because you need pegs to uh, hold the doors in place. When they flap in. Again, instead of it coming down there, it just flaps inwards there. A bit hard to explain. Hopefully this video's uh, enlightened you a little bit. Um, that's no good ready for if you want to have a look around and keep an eye out on things. But we'll take a little trek before we do the last one. Because the last one is my personal favourite, I think. As much as I love this one, the next one I'm going to do is... Uh, it's fabulous it's like sleeping in a caravan under a tarp right so we'll destroy this and get onto the one where i need a pole <laughs> but today that's going to be my pole ah the pyramid another one of the most basic setups ever yet effective uh three pegs at the back you can use two one on either side or you can put a small pole or your bergen to bring the back up to give you a little bit more room inside um, about two foot in, foot and a half high, gives you a bit more space. Again, better with something bigger than a basher, because this doesn't go just down to the bottom, down to the ground. It can do, but then the opening, the top will be a lot lower. Um, Corners in both corners at the front, two pegs, so you can use two, four pegs in total. Um, again, simple, the pyramid. Use a bigger basher or tarp, get all your corners down. Very effective. Um, again, you can use a pole and just tie the pole off down to the ground. But Muggins didn't bring his pole, so he used the tree. Tip though, if you are doing this, don't tie it off near the tree. You won't get in and out. Leave plenty of room. And tie it off as high as you can. Well, not stupidly high. But you're better off putting it upwards than outwards. If you bring it outwards, you'll get sag. And then you have to pull the back so tight, it'll start pulling it all too tight. So, get it quite high on this one, um, if you're tying it off to a tree, the higher the better. You know, don't think, oh, it's that high, or my pole's that high. You want to get it nice and high, I should have gone higher really, but that's working fine. Plenty of room in there for two people, get your rucksacks down the back, have a brew, bring the kids out, set up in the garden, campsite, fishing, whatever, works great. Visibility not so good, again you can only see out the front. Um, with this though you've got as much headroom as you want depending on the tarp you can have this five I think I had it five foot tall once but you can have it five foot tall opening and then go right down at the back right we're gonna modify this now quickly uh, for my last one I think it'll be um, I think this is the diamond at uh, the pyramid and the next one's the diamond where you fold the corners in right this will take a few more minutes from the, uh pyramid to the diamond fantastic shelter works better with a bigger tarp but i will fit in here but just not as comfy as i would be with a massive tarp um so instead of pegging out your rear corners on a square or rectangular tarp you go the next one in same on that side instead of your corner your next one in um peg out the side ones as normal and then your corners fold them under Fold under your corners, this is great, you don't need a ground sheet, you can put your bags on the corners that fold inwards. Again, you can use something in the middle or back to raise the rear. Uh, the front, centre, eyelid, tied off the same position as it was a minute ago. This is the one that takes a bit more time, it's well worth practising. Um, run out of pegs, so I use one bit of power cord to go from there, all the way over there. Tie off to the tree, which brings the opening out, instead of a pyramid, 
nice triangle, you're getting like a five hexagon shape. Um, and again, that side is tied off to a tree all the way over there, extreme. Bungees, I recommend bungees, bright yellow bungees. Bring them forward. Um, I've gone off to the side, but if you bring them forward, not sideways, it brings it a bit more rigid and you get no, no folds or flaps, as I've got there. So bring them forward. With a pole, this is self-supporting, because these bits, pegged off on the corner, should hold the pole up. I bring it outwards. And again, we need to put in the guides to pull out the sides, bring them slightly forward on a 45 degree angle. That will hold the pole upright with the tension from the back on the pole. Um, again, I've used this several times on a massive tarp for like, radio activations on hilltops and stuff. And um, it's very wind re sort of reflectant because of the shape of it. And it's a nice big opening, uh, even with a pole. I used to use a pole, uh, but obviously on a bigger tarp, basher, something like 10, 8 or 10, 12 foot, 14 foot, um, you can normally sit two people in there comfortably. You can lie down, there's plenty of headroom. That at the moment is about three foot, but I used to have it four or five foot off the ground. So the opening used to be up here on my old tarp. And that, that is a fantastic configuration. Again, low profile, but with a small fire outside of that, very small fire, that will stay hot warm and dry all night and again I love the opening on that um, less rain comes in there than quite a few others um, yeah I like that that is one two three four five six six pegs you could use seven I've got a middle eyelet at the back I could peg down um, I've pegged in near the front to give more space here but I can peg it out further at the back, fold in that tiny corner instead of such a big corner, and that'll give me all round more space. But again, if your feet are at that end, in fact, tell you how big this used to be. I used to lay across that way, I used to have my head there and my feet in there, and I could cook in there because that comes around, that curves around as like a wind reflector. So I used to always cook in there with a mess stove, and when I slept, I could lay all the way across the entrance, and uh, the heat used to just go in and build up at the back so the back of it was nice and hot the front was hot and i was in the middle so yeah big basher i'm six foot six and i used to lay all the way across there and have quite a bit of space um try and get these bits nearly 90 degrees like sticking straight up 45 degree angle uh, the more eyelets you've got the more you can peg off and bring it into shape and bring it a bit more taut again this is just a basic basher I've also realised that a few of these eyelets are coming a little bit frayed where it's been pulled tight so many times. That one's alright. It's one of the back I've noticed. Well, that's the one I folded under. They're getting a bit frayed here where I've had it so long. So lucky I bought a new one a while ago. So I can use this one just as like my backup, my secondary one. And I'm going to start using my other one as my main one. But that is great. It's like a massive hooped biz bivy. Uh, hoop bivvies are great, you're looking at a lot of money, but again they've got fly sheets, ground sheet, everything built onto it. But this is basically like a hoop bivvy, but on a big scale. Um, now I'm regretting not bringing a big tarp, just to have built this. But seriously, you get a massive tarp, a tenner, you know, 15 quid, and uh, you will be comfortable in there for the whole weekend. You won't be cramped um, like you can a small A-frame or a tiny lean-to. In there you'll have enough space for two people to sit comfortably you know if you are stuck in there all weekend uh, it takes the longest to set up because um, it takes tweaking you set it up and then you have to tweak it put it all tight but I'll see if I can show you the corners you probably can't see them because I didn't fold them under properly but normally you climb in there and you pull the corners out and uh, the corners come out quite a bit and you can put your bag on there and uh, you're folding that on that side just about see it over there can't fit in this one I haven't got a ground seat I'm not getting filthy but yeah I didn't pull the corners in probably I just tucked them under but the corners do come out quite a bit to sort of put gear on and then I used to lay a ground sheet across here and then sleep so I don't know how many I've done today but they're all uh, a few that you can do it's not all of them there's a few basher stroke tarp setups and modifications to go from a simple a-frame to a closed end um tent and uh from a pyramid basic shelter to uh 
pyramid, uh, not pyramid, sorry, from a pyramid to a diamond. And again, from a lean-to to a lean-to with a porch or the fly, and then a raised lean-to with a fly and pulled back um, to give you an extra probably two, three foot of space. Um, thanks for watching. I've been Wow Sly. Uh, this is my 15 minute from home bug out location. A lot of people say you've got to be out the house in 15 minutes. Within that time, I will be here. Uh, one of many locations. But my favourite for stealth camping, because it's only 15 minutes away. All the other ones were all within an hour. Um, but this is great. In fact, I'll walk up here to where my other camp is, was, is, I may return. Camp there for the weekend once, hammock. Uh, camped there a couple of times. Built a wall there once. There we go, there's the basher. The other one's better for this time of year. It's got more yellow in it, because there's quite a lot of yellow on the leaves. The other one I think is more suited. That's a bit too dark. But yeah, you can make that low profile. Again, depends on your pole, your walking stick, or how high you want to attach it to the tree, and mainly how tall your tarp is. But you can have it as low and wide as you want, or as tall as you want. Um, I think I did make that once, five foot tall and probably about five foot wide but averagely it's about four foot tall and five or six foot wide normally all right thanks for watching i'll have a quick gulp of some water have a cigarette pack up and go home uh very simple setups today again not even a pole or a walking stick uh would be great just don't need it and uh, whatever you do take care and practice that's, that's a bit of a bodge up. If anyone thinks that looks nice, that's a mess. <laughs> I haven't done it for a couple of years. Um, but when I used to do it regularly, that used to look perfect. And now it's just a bit of a state. Sorry for the bad camera work. I shouldn't be walking around. I should be standing still. But I'm trying to show you that, you know, there's no one else here. I haven't got um, plans or someone telling me what to do. And I am in the woods, solo. Just doing a few setups and configurations. Just walking into cobwebs. Uh, yeah, again, that's not perfect, but again, we are on a bit of a slant. Uh, you can leave the corners out, you can peg the corners out flat. Uh, it helps the water disperse, obviously, away from the camp. Uh, this way, obviously, it's going to go into the ground and then soak its way under. But then you do have the corners folded under as a bit of a ground sheet. So either way, water's not really going to get in. But a lot of people will say, have the corners outwards, so the water disperses away from the tent. But even if it does leak under here, your stuff's going to be on the ground sheet anyway. But I suppose it's, I don't know, six of one, two threes of another. Right, take care YouTube. All the best till next time. Oh yeah, please like and subscribe, share, and uh, stand on one leg and pat your head. ta -da. And most importantly, whatever you do outdoors, leave no trace. I didn't bring any gear with me today as such or anything that might make rubbish. But if you do, take it home with you. Uh, nothing has changed, apart from I've added a couple of bit of wood to my uh, storage, because I'm coming back. Got an overnight in a week or two, up here. So I've got some uh, small sticks drying out. Some of them are already there. So uh, yeah, I wanna make sure I've got some dry wood. Um, right. I'm off. That was it. When I said uh, about walking around and not using a tripod, um, it was to show you around, obviously, what I'd done. <laughs> I think I said something else, like, to make sure there's no one else here. Um, <clears throat> but, yeah, hopefully uh, people have got a few ideas. Everyone from people that already go out wild camping or setting up bashes and tarps for whatever they do, camping, picnicking, you know, the odd extreme radioactivity, or whatever you know you use the setup for so hopefully people got a few ideas on small modifications or you know mods that you might want to try out yourself or for people that are uh, thinking about it like some of my uh, subscribers and messages i get people that are like uh wanting to experiment get out of the house a bit try it you don't have to go out all night just set it up have a cup of tea and go home um so hopefully that gave a few ideas started a discussion or two the main thing, I forgot to take photos, so I'll be doing screenshots for my Facebook page. 
but they're gonna be low quality. Right, phone's now saying it's full. There's my bike. I'm going home. I've got no memory left of my phone. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs>